Good morning, church. Welcome to Hope Daily uh, on this Wednesday morning, halfway um, through the week. I hope you guys are doing well and having a, a great week so far. We are just finishing off uh, today and tomorrow um, this book of 2 Samuel that we've been in uh, for the last few weeks. And it's been really great to, to journey through, I guess, the life of David uh, and seeing his ups uh, and downs, and but seeing how God is so faithful and all that. Uh, and today, there's a, it's quite a, a longish chapter, and the majority of the chapter is focused on all those men who were so faithful to David and fought for him, and were right there beside him, and willing even to risk their lives um, for him uh, so amazingly. But I'm not going to really focus on that, I'm going to focus on just the first uh, seven verses, which are told as here, so the last words of David, you might have that heading as well in your Bibles. Let me just quickly pray for us, uh, and then I'll, I'll begin. Um, if you want to comment in uh, and say hello, uh, that would be great, guys. Father, as we come to your word this morning, um, Lord, would you open our eyes to it, would you open our hearts to what you want to say to us? Uh, would you challenge us, renew us, and strengthen us, um, and, re and remind us of who you are, Lord God? Um, Father, so that we might live a life that is pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. Come. Uh, and speak by our spirit, we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. So, guys, uh, let me just read these first seven verses of this chapter, which kind of seem in a way to be in a slightly similar vein to the chapter yesterday that Jamie looked at, which kind of sound like a psalm, uh, except uh, this seems to be uh, David, I guess, talking more about himself and his position. So let's read them. These are the last words of David, the oracle of David, the son of Jesse, the oracle of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by the God of Jacob, Israel's singer of songs. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His word was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The rock of Israel, that's God, said to me, when one rules over men in righteousness, when he rules in the fear of God, he is like the light of morning at sunrise on a cloudless morning. Like the brightness after rain that brings the grass from the earth. Is not my house right with God? Has he not made with me an everlasting covenant, arranged and secured in every part? Will he not bring to fruition my salvation and grant me my every desire? For evil men are all to be cast aside like thorns, which are not gathered with the hand. Whoever touches thorns uses a tool of iron or a shaft of a spear. They are burned up where they lie. So the gist of this, basically, um, the the book, uh, so this chapter here, introduces David's last, not not many words, just a few words, um, for the end of his life that were maybe the last ones that were recorded. Uh, and what we see here is uh, David um, speaking of someone who rules in righteousness, who who rules in the fear of God, um, basically, and then in verse four. Um, that imagery there is talking about those who do that will bring light and bring health and bring um, you know, everlasting, I guess, everlasting life. If you think about Jesus in that analogy there. And then in the last bit, it's comparing those that do that compared to those that don't. Uh, they, those will be burnt up where they lie. Now, coming back to this verse three, it, it's. I was looking at uh, some commentaries um, and a lot of people are kind of on two camps and some are kind of crossover. So some people would say um, that when David, when it said here, the rock of Israel said to me, when one rules over men in righteousness, when he rules in the fear of God, that that is actually pertaining to David. Now that's him himself saying, you know, he was a, he was a just ruler, someone who feared God. Um, and others will say that that is, that is not actually David, that it's actually Christ um, who it's talking about here. You know, only Christ can truly rule um, justly and in, right to, in full righteousness. Um, and then others would say that it is both. That actually, this is David talking about himself, but it's also um, prefiguring Christ. Um, you know, David was... A good ruler, he was seen um, by probably many most of uh, the Israelites and Christians as one of as Israel's greatest kings. 
and yes he made errors, yes he slipped up, but he was held with high regard. And God, God clearly held him with high regard too, with the way he blessed him and his family and brought um, Jesus from uh, his line as well. Now, now I, th I would go in the last camp with this, that actually this is David speaking himself, but it's also pertaining to the future Christ. Because yes, David had, I guess, ruled in righteousness and mostly in the fear of God, but actually it would be only Christ who could truly rule over men in righteousness, in the fear of God. Now, I want to just focus in on, on this, in the fear of God. I've been reading um, Exodus 20. I've been going through Exodus and up to the, the Ten Commandments, a very famous passage, uh, and it talks about... Uh, in, in verse 20, I'll just find it, of that chapter, it says, because basically the people were afraid of this thunder and lightning and hearing God's voice and these trumpet sounds. And uh, Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. Uh, in other versions, it said, it says, you know, do not fear. It's like those two words for fear. But here, so they clearly are difference. There's difference here in the words. So, you know, do not be afraid. Don't be fearful. Don't be, like, scared uh, in that kind of sense. And think about all the harm that's been brought to you by him. But instead, we need to have a fear of God in, a, in such a way that it, it stops us from sinning. That it makes us realise just who God is. You know, you know, God is the only righteous judge. He's the only truly just one. And Jesus, his son, was the only truly uh, just person to walk this earth. But obviously he was fully God uh, as, as well. And so what we see here is we've got Jesus and we've got David. Now, David did rule uh, justly for the most part and in, and in and sought out to rule in the fear of God, seeking to rule justly and righteously. But obviously he's not perfect, he's like you and me. But he sought to do that. Now we as well can, can do this, we can seek to live in the fear of God. Yeah, kind of that reverent love and respect for God and, and also thinking as well, I'm coming, I guess coming under that in the fear of God, is the fact that in the future, in the in the end days, there will be judgment for those who don't live justly and righteously, and who are who are saved by grace. You know, we need to take this seriously. You know, if we are truly a Christian and we truly uh, believe that we have been saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, that doesn't mean you just sit back. Uh, and carry on living the way you've been living. You know, we had to live and to rule, so particularly with leaders, to rule in the fear uh, of God. That is how we are to, to live. We are not to live foolishly. We, we are not to take our salvation for granted at all. We need to look upon God with such a fear and reverence that it helps us to, to withstand and to fight against the testing that comes from the enemy and, and of the evil one and that is allowed to happen sometimes by God. But we're not alone in that. We have the Holy Spirit to help us and to guide us and to strengthen us in that. But we do need to live in, in this fear of God. Like I say, it's not a, I'm, I'm, I'm scared uh, and I'm really worried. No, it's a, it's a fear coming under a loving, gracious Father who is seeking righteousness. Now, we are so fortunate that Jesus died for our sins and that we can put on his righteousness. But if we truly love God and, and have respect for him and revere him, then you guys and me should want to live a life that is just, a life that is righteous as much as possible by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because if we do that, guys, 
then we're going to be someone who you know speaks up, who is honest, who is who is just in our dealings with things, um, who is upright, uh, and that will be a great example, and um, to those w- within the world, we will stand uh, out, we will be set apart as God says we are. We are set apart um, through the blood of Jesus, and we we need to we need to seek to, to by the Holy Spirit's power live differently in in the fear in this fear of God it's not easy guys but we can do it by his power but we do look to Jesus though we do look to his righteousness and are so thankful for it that he was the one who truly would be fully righteous and therefore could make a way for us I want to challenge us today guys you know, don't don't take this gift of salvation lightly and think just do what you want the rest of your life that is not the mark of someone who truly loves and reveres and respects the Lord God so think about how you're living guys I think about how I'm living daily am I living a life that is living in the fear of God am I living in such a way that I, that I love, I show my love and reverence and respect to God in how I act, in how I speak and how I think or am I just taking my salvation for granted sitting on a blessed assurance not even seeking to live in line with God's will seeking to strive um, for uh, living justly living righteously let's pray Father God, you give us an incredible challenge here uh, in this this chapter to live uh, a life that is respectful and rever- uh, in reverence to um, a wonderful, loving God and loving Father. Lord, I thank you that you give us the Holy Spirit to help us to live such a life. And Lord, I thank you that where we fall short of this, uh, Lord Jesus, Lord, that there is there is grace uh, and there is the righteousness of Jesus that we are clothed in so that we may enter your presence uh, and live with you eternally. But Lord, I pray that you would help us not to be complacent, help us not to be lazy, um, help us not to take our salvation for granted, Lord God. Help us to realise what it truly is to live in the fear of God in such a way that it transforms our lives, Lord Jesus. And so that we might live differently to be an example to those in the world so that we can rule and lead well amongst other Christians. But also in the world. Oh, we want to be, we want to stand out because we're a follower of Christ. Lord, would you help us to do that by the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us to live well, but to live in, 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 in a fear of God, in reverence to you Lord Jesus, you Lord God, the only righteous ones. So help us Holy Spirit today, this week, this month, to daily be looking at ourselves and seeking to live a a life that leads, that is led in justice and in acting in, in righteous ways, in our thoughts, in our words, in our deeds, because of this fear of you that we have Lord God. Knowing that, though, that Father, you are a loving Father. And Father, we are so thankful for that. Lord, would you help as we pray? It's only by your power, only by your might. Lord, keep us from temptation. Help us through the tests that come our way. Help us to stay strong and true to you, Lord God. In your name. Amen. Amen, guys. I hope that was helpful. I uh, hope it wasn't too deep uh, for this morning. But yeah, it's a real challenge that I want to all take away and be thinking upon daily. Not just for today, but for every day. Um, have a great day, guys, though. And go and live um, a great life of witness to the Lord, living in fear of God. Have a great day, guys.